Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, I'm really excited to have joining me, bassist from Skid Row, Rachel Bolin. We're going to talk all about their latest album, their upcoming tour in 2023 with Buck Cherry, and so much more. There's lots to cover in this episode. Rachel had a lot of great stories. I know you guys are going to really enjoy it. So let's jump in and let's get started. Rachel, first off, I just want to thank you for joining the show today. I appreciate it. Um, the band has just wrapped up a great tour across Europe. I know you guys were in England, the U.S. and Canada before that. How have the show been this year? Oh, man, they've been great. It's, um, it's nice to get back out on the road, you know, uh, after, after being cooped up for a couple of years. But, yeah, with, uh, with the way things are going, we had an album out. And, uh, you know, Eric joined the band in uh, late February, early March, and it's just been full steam ahead ever since then, you know, recording the record and then getting on the road and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's been great. We, we've had some amazing shows and, and um, we covered a lot of ground. <laughs> you sure did. You absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned Eric joining the band. And at least from my vantage point, I know you guys have been very active for decades now, but. When he stepped in earlier this year, there seemed to be a buzz and a resurgence around the band that, quite honestly, I haven't seen in decades. Did you guys feel that as well? And that's oh, no yeah. disrespect to the other guys. Oh, no, 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 um, no. Yeah, we we totally felt that. Like when he joined the band, it seemed like everything kind of the, the the circle was complete. You know what I mean? And um, it, it, he brought a, a new new attitude and a new energy into the band. And it was infectious, you know, we, we all, we felt it as soon as we got in that first, uh, well, first of all, hearing him, the stuff that he sent us while he was recording the album. And then when we finally got together in the same room, it, it, the end, it was really electric and you could tell on stage every night we go out there, we're just having so much fun and everyone's just putting 110% into everything. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get a chance yet to see the band with Eric, um, but all the videos I've seen, um, it just seems like full of energy. So what to you about him made him the right fit in the band? Was it the energy, the voice, the whole package? What was it about him? I think a lot of that. Uh, his voice seemed to work with Skid Row really well. And, and just, I guess, you know, just kind of the keys we write in and stuff like that. His voice just, it, it, it was perfect for it. And you know, growing up a fan, he understood the band well, and he took it from a different perspective that we did. Like he wanted to make the best Skid Row songs that he would want to hear as a fan. And that was the same with our, our uh, producer, Nick. So it, uh, it really helped us in the sense that um, we, you know, when you're, you're this close to everything, you can't see <laughs> past it you know and so we we just we just did the natural progression and, and the slow growing progression of with on the inside and so it's kind of hard to see stuff from the outside and that's where Eric came in and brought that outside perspective as well as Nick yeah and I think you know hearing you tell that story it makes me think of like Arnell and Journey or even somebody like Tommy Thayer and Kiss where they were mm -hmm. fans beforehand and then they exactly. come in and they could have that appreciation of what a fan wants. And it really sometimes just rejuvenize a band that, you know, maybe um, wouldn't have had that same energy 20, 30 years into their career. You're right. That's a hundred percent. Yeah. Tommy Thayer is the perfect example of, you know, being such a huge Kiss fan <laughs> saying, Hey dudes, you know what songs I would like to hear Kiss play? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like, you know, that's so great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the absolute perfect example is Tommy Thayer. Is there any songs Eric said, hey, guys, we should play this. And you looked at him like, are you nuts? 
uh he, yeah he mentions a bunch of them and they're they're uh, the one that we really want to do that he's been really chomping at the bit is quicksand Jesus put that back in the set, which I'm sure it'll be in for 2023 at, at some point or another. But yeah, he's mentioned a few and we're like, you know, we tried that a while ago and it just, it's, it's more of a listen to on the radio or in your room song <laughs> than it's a, like a crowd pleaser. So, uh, but we'll, we, you know, we're open-minded and we'll try anything. We're, we're trying anything. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned before the fact that you guys put out the album, The Gang's All Here, which I believe is your first full-length studio album in 16 years, right? So yeah. what made you decide after all these years, because then more recently as you guys were doing EPs, what made you decide this was the year, hey, we're not going to go to EP route, we're going to go to full studio album? Well, yeah, when we when we signed with Ear Records, that was the thing. We're like, we want to we want to do a full full length. You know, we did the EP thing and it, it was cool. It was fun, but it's just like, <laughs> I don't know it just kind of fell flat but with uh with the songs we were writing and the the momentum that we had and then with Eric joining uh to increase the momentum you know it just we we wanted to do a full length uh we, we decided that a while ago but then it was kind of when we signed with ear records and, and Eric came into the fold we were just like yeah let's absolutely Let's do this. And we had enough songs and we just kept sure. writing and writing. So, <laughs> yeah. So now for you, who's been there since day one, you know, when you record and you release new music, 2022, is there pressure do you feel to live up to like, oh, this has got to be as good as monkey business or youth gone wild? Or do you feel like you have a freedom? Like, Hey, you know, I don't have to worry about selling a million albums. I can just be who I want to be. Well, um, no, there is pressure that uh, I'm sure we put a lot of it, we put on ourselves, but uh, like after this album, there's definitely going to be pressure because we worked, <laughs> we worked a long, hard time on this. We recorded it a couple times. We, uh, a lot of songs we had, we kicked to the curb. Um, and then with, with Nick, he, he was able to bring us back to it's like almost like wanted pressure, you know, because he brought us back to our, our like where our heads were at when we wrote those first couple records. Sure. And it's not hard. I mean, it's not easy to do. You know, it's really hard to retrace your steps <laughs> when your career has been over 30 years. You know, <laughs> sure. um, so he he brought the skid row back out of us. And mm -hmm. so holding on to that, keeping that and and going into another record with that same attitude that that's where the pressure is but i welcome pressure i like i i i would like to think that this band works well under pressure we, we've been in high pressure situations <laughs> before and and it it, uh, it always kind of pans out for us so yeah i think uh, to me that's one of the things with this new album you can put it side by side like slaves to the grind and the new album and you can tell it's the same band it, it really has that same energy the new album to me almost sounds like a fresh new band. And I mean that as a compliment, you know, so to me, that's, it's great. You can put those two albums side by side, 30 years apart from each other and know it's the same band. Yeah, that that's really cool. And, and we got to give Nick a lot of credit for that. Um, Cause he would, like I was saying, he made, he, he wanted to make his favorite Skid Row record being a yep. fan. And that's what he says he did. And it's funny that you mentioned that. Cause a lot of people say this sounds just like Skid Row, but not rehashed. And right. it doesn't sound like you guys are chasing anything. It just sounds like Skid Row, but new Skid Row, you know? Exactly, exactly. So yesterday there was the big tour announcement that you guys made spring 2023. You guys are going to be co-headlining with Buck Cherry. So talk about how that came about. Um, they're, they're friends of ours. You know, uh, we toured together in Europe. We did a, a, a co-headlining thing with them in Europe years back. And we just had a lot of fun. You know, we had a lot of fun with those guys. and when it came up the possibility to do it again, we were all excited about it because we're fans, you know, and it's, it's two different types of rock, but it's the same essence and the same spirit is in both bands. It is going to be a badass tour. <laughs> and I hope, I hope it continues down the road. You know, we have three weeks right now and then both bands are breaking off to do their own things. And there's talk about it even continuing on through the summer, possibly don't know, but um, it uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, they're, they're, like I said, they're all friends of ours. And now Billy Rowe, is, he's in, uh, he's been in Buck Cherry for a while and he's an old friend. Like we knew him from back in 89. So yeah. Um, you know, Billy and I have always stayed in touch and him and Rob Hammersmith, our drummer, are very close. Um, 
being the the old motorcycle fanatics that they are so it uh yeah we're gonna have a really good time man do you think that be any chance like will they jump up on stage with you guys and do a song or vice versa you think there'll be anything like I, that? i hope so i hope so you know i i really do i hope so i think it uh it'll be fun it's going to be a really fun tour if it's an, if it's half as fun as we had the first time we went out together it's going to be great that's awesome now when people do co-headline and tours sometimes it's the same band closes every night sometimes they rotate how are you guys going to work that uh we're going to close um d- d- we have a little bit more uh to set up so um we, we it, it was just it just works out better that way but we're all we're playing the same length set and there's a band opening the show called no resolve yep. who um, is a really good like active rock type of band that i think everyone's going to like a lot that's awesome and you touched on this a little bit before but you know as soon as you released the tour dates of course there's so many fans saying what about my city? You know, what about my city? So yeah. it sounds like it's nothing definite, but it sounds like there's a chance that there's some more dates added in, in the summer or something. We're hoping. Yeah, that's what we're talking about now. We're awesome. talking about that now. Um, you know, the, everything goes up for sale to the general public, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, fr- Friday. So I think the pre-sales today, which oh, is yeah. Wednesday, and then the public sale is Friday. Friday, correct. I keep yep. thinking today's Thursday. Um, yeah, so you know, um, we anticipate it going really well. And, and we're looking at, uh, we're looking at, at, um, at least a week right now. Um, perhaps more. That's awesome. Now you mentioned before that the bands have other things. And one of the things you have, I think is some Australian tour dates in May that you mm-hmm. had to push off right now. That was supposed to be happening right around now, but you had to right now, postpone yeah. them. Right. You had to postpone them, postpone them because, you know, snake said, uh, yes, have surgery. So first and foremost, how is he doing? Uh, let, let's see yeah, that. he's doing okay he's been in chronic pain for mm. quite some time and just dealing with it um i would say at least 15 years Ooh. and and you know being on planes wearing 10 pounds of wood around your neck and jumping around <laughs> with it every night none of that helps so he, he finally got to the point where it was starting to um uh, affect his his arm where mm-hmm. like numbness and pain and stuff like that. And it's a couple of discs. Um, so they, uh, they scheduled surgery for December and that's, that's where we're at now. And we're taking uh, obviously December, January and February off for him to, to do PT and all that stuff. And it, he'll be fine. He's psyched. He's like, I just don't want to be in pain anymore. Okay. You know, you step out on stage and all the adrenaline kicks in and you don't feel it. And then 10 minutes after you come off stage, all the adrenaline's <laughs> gone. And then you start to feel it again, you know? So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's for the better. And, you know, uh, we're bummed we didn't get to go to Australia, but it, this is a legit reason why not, you know? And so we're, we're we rescheduled for May and, and it, it'll work out, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, I think we're going to, we may go to Japan after yes, that yes. and then possibly to korea so since we'll be on that side of the planet sure, <laughs> you know I mean? sure make sense of that time absolutely yeah yeah so but uh yeah danny bozzi the promoter he understood and and uh, all of our fans understand that it's just one of those things that that you can't get around because it could you know do irreparable damage if if you don't get it taken care of. He, he's he's put it off long enough he's probably should have had the surgery about 10 years ago 12 years ago but oh, wow wow and speaking of surgery, if I'm not mistaken, you had surgery and appendix removed earlier in the year, right? So, and then you missed some shows um, from yeah. that and then from COVID. So how, first off, how's your health? And then second off, how is it for you with the band playing and you not being there? I don't know which was worse, the pain from the appendicitis or eight o'clock. <laughs> when eight o'clock, 8.30 rolled around, I knew those guys were stepping on stage without me. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it, it was just one of those weird things. My wife and I were having lunch and we were running errands and we stopped at a, one of our favorite Mexican places to have lunch. And I go, man, I got a really bad cramp. I don't know what it's from. She's like, I'll oh, just keep an eye. She's a, she's an RN, you know, so oh, okay. she's always, always assessing. So I was <laughs> like, yeah. So I was like, yeah, it hurts pretty bad. Actually. She's like, uh, maybe you got an air pocket gas pocket or something. So we ate and then ran a few more errands. And I go, man, I got to go home. This is really starting to hurt. And it seems like it moved over a little bit. She's like, um, yeah, let me get my stethoscope. So she got her stethoscope. She's like, she's like, your stomach is freaking out. And so it was like everything else around it. She goes, you have appendicitis. And I'm like, nah, you know, <laughs> you know, 
the, the bass player, bass player knows way better than an of artist course. That, that's been doing it for 15 years. You know, it's like, uh, you know, she's like, I'm telling you. And she goes, goes right to Google and finds 15 signs. You have appendicitis. And I had about 11 of them. And I'm like, okay, okay, let's go to the hospital. And then it kicked in on the way to the hospital. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> so, Anyway, we got there and um, I went to, to St. Thomas in Midtown, in Nashville. And it was, it, it, I mean, as crappy of an experience it was, it was just a smooth experience. And, and they, um, they got me in. I was there for like two nights um, and I'm on the phone. I'm calling Snake. I'm like, you know, Warrant was doing the show. And I'm like, I know Robbie Crane knows half these songs. So just give him a shout. And they, they called Robbie and he came in and he filled in for me and just saved the show. So, um, yeah. And then I, I felt better as soon as I woke up from surgery, I could feel that gone. You know? <laughs> Thankfully it didn't burst. He said it was close, but it, it oh, didn't. Wow. But uh, yeah, the funny thing was, is right before they were about to knock me out, um, one of the other surgeons was a fan of Skid Row, and I hear on his phone, <laughs> he starts playing "I Remember You" on his phone right as that oh. stuff. <laughs> Is that really what, it, what you want to hear right before you go into surgery? Yeah, well, the, first, the last thing I said before I went under, I was like, "You could have played a better song." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's great! But yeah, it was pretty funny. That's hilarious. but I feel I feel great. Thank you for asking, and, and uh, yeah, I, I only missed one show, and then um, by the next week, I was good to go. Was that your first show you ever missed at the band? Um, no, it was my second. Wow. I missed I missed one on the Kiss tour um, oh. because my flight got in late. And yeah, so, gotcha. but uh, other than that, that, yeah, that was my second. So one motion. every like 20 years or so is basically what you'll say you miss, right? Just give it to uh, me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I've called in more than once to work in the last 20 years. So you got a good record yeah. going on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had a good excuse this time. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, right now in the news, there's been a lot of bands talking about when they perform live backing tracks and all of that. What's your position on all? I know Blackie Lawless just said that he uses enhancements in his shows. What's your position on all this backing track talk? En enhancements. That, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh um you know what we don't use them skid row doesn't use them uh we never have we'd rather sing a bad note you know and be able to just that's just us you know what i mean like if a, if a band goes out and they need it they need like you know like you know there's not an orchestra playing well you know right. kiss is doing beth you know what right. i mean <laughs> there never has been uh the the in bohemian rhapsody that whole symphonic part they walk yeah. off stage it's it's been a no one's ever had a problem with it um bands that that i'm gonna use that word enhance like with you know you, you have certain drum tracks and uh, that that you're not gonna bring out another drummer if it's a different beat to a song or, or just different sounds and everything who cares man it's like obviously you're not going to load up another bus full of musicians to <laughs> of come course. out and play one song uh, you know oh we we have that whole you know we we need that violin with the timpani drum you know it's like no it's just <laughs> it's i don't really care what when what i don't like is when i go to see a band and it's just so damn obvious they're either one not singing not playing or there's just so much stuff like uh, tons of like say you're playing you, we're trying to fill it in like more guitars it's like just if it's another guitar just get another guitar player but if it's like a whole bunch of stuff and basically a crowd is going and watching people move to listening to the record that's when it starts to bother me um i just tend not to go see bands like that because i did uh, it's just not my thing. Skid Row, we never use tracks. We well, for for anyone that's going to be technical, before I remember you, we do use we do run the sound of thunder in the beginning. <laughs> that's okay? very different. It's okay. Not really thunder. <laughs> you right? don't, you can't not, bring a cloud with you everywhere you go. <laughs> no, I, we have to rely on local weather. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but that that's as far as it goes with us. Um, like we we were doing a song, tear it down um off the new record and there's a lot of backing vocals on that and that we tracked like gang vocals when we were doing them live 
it didn't sound like enough. So we have two guys on our road crew that sing really, really good and are really good musicians. So we put them on the side of the stage with the mic, made no bones about it. And they helped us with the gang vocals and, and the singing. And it's just, you want the optimal for Skid Row, I'm saying. We want to give the, the best experience a, a fan could have um, within what we can do without relying on stuff like that but if you use it and you need it i don't care do it do it I, i'm not i'm not gonna hate a guy for doing right. it you know what i mean it's the entertainment business that's what we do it's the entertainment business. that is you true and people forget that <laughs> it is the yeah. entertainment and it is a business absolutely that's right but now for me going back like through my childhood one of the things i always used to love i used to sit on my rug as a kid and i would read all the line of notes and i'd read all the credits and when i look at the skid row albums through all the years there is your name near every one of these songs right whether you co-wrote songs like 18 and life monkey business youth gone wild basically all the hits have your co-write on it or even songs that you wrote by yourself piece of me can't stand the heart right? your name is basically near every single skid row song so my question is do you think you get enough credit or recognition as a songwriter um I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to get. I mean, I don't think any of us will ever from from this band will ever, um, you know, be in any kind of expose of like <laughs> of anything that we do. It's just the type of band we are in the time we came out, you know. And but do I care? No. Do, do when when a when a, a fan comes up to me and says, hey, those lyrics that you wrote to blah, 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 you know, they mean a lot to me um it got me through a tough time that's that's the payoff for me dude it's like you first of all making the connection with something that you came up with in your head no matter what it is whether it's a song whether you you it's a painting or whether it's a poem or whatever it is if you make a connection with another person just one person let alone massive amounts of people sure that's huge that's like really huge like i i play bass because you play bass Wow. When people say that to me, I'm just thinking my mind immediately goes back to Gene Simmons, Dennis Dunaway, Paul McCartney, <laughs> Roger Glover. And I'm just like, not, and believe me, I'm not putting myself in the same room as those guys, but I'm just saying when, when something like that, something you do affects a person to do the same thing. Sure. I'm getting chills talking about it. Like no bullshit, man. That, that is huge uh, to me. That that's, that's really huge. And, and it, it means the world to me. Um, am I underrated or get the recognition? I don't know. I, I, I don't know the scale, what the scale of, of sure. recognition is. I mean, sold a lot of records with the lyrics. You know, right. the songs that I was part of on it. So I, I don't know. Like I said, is Rolling Stones, is Rolling Stone going to do an expose on me? I highly fucking doubt. I it. don't think so. <laughs> I don't, no offense, but I don't think Rolling Stone yeah, is going to be no, knocking. No, is there a no, song as a songwriter that you're most proud of from a songwriting point of view? Um, ooh, there's a few. Uh, well, Quicksand Jesus is one. Um, uh, man so many like i i love the 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 songs that really go kind of deep and get get a little more metaphorical um you know i i loved 18 in life and and stuff like that um i love the songs that tell stories but i like songs that go into to um just different it really it just gives you the paint for an empty canvas, you know, and it means a different thing possibly to each person. So quick San, San Jesus, one of those song medicine jar off of um, uh, subhuman race. I really like those lyrics. I, I like the way they rattle. And um, I think uh, off the newest record, I, I'm really proud of the story behind uh, and uh, when the lights come on. Oh, wow. um, I actually mentioned a couple friends in it. I've, I've never done that. We've never done that in lyrics. We've, we've given names and hinted, but I actually, with this one, it just, um, it was one of those kind of songs that just kind of came out, you know? And it, it uh, you know, I, I mentioned a couple friends by name and I'm like, hey, you know that dude, Tommy, in the song? Yeah, that's you. What? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's awesome. And, yeah, so so th those songs stand out in my head that's awesome so for you then as a songwriter do you approach writing a song different 
in the current times compared to like 1986 when you were first recording and writing with Skid Row? Is there a difference for you? A little bit different headspace because of the life that we've led between sure. then and now. You know, back then we were just careless and carefree. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, we were young. We were in our 20s. And, and so it's a, a little bit different approach from subject matter standpoint sure. um as far as the same way we approach writing songs snake and i still you know we write the bulk of it but uh we still take the same approach one of us will have a riff or an idea uh for a storyline uh or i should say subject um but we'll sit down and talk that's how our, our song our sessions always start we sit down and talk and we might not even talk about you know music or, or anything to do with it we just blow the cobwebs out that's what we call it just clean out the cobwebs and then we get started but we we, we never really had a formula to how we did things it's just like uh, i'll play him something i came up with he'll play me something and when we land on something like oh yeah 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 that's cool let's let's rock with that and, <laughs> right. and we just we just continue nowadays it's a little easier because we used to have dictaphones, you know, and, and or even like the cassettes that we have to, okay, here, ready? Go ahead, play that riff again type of thing. Now we both have our studio, so it's a little easier. We just, we could we could walk in without a song and, and hopefully a few hours later come out with a rough demo to send the guys and see if they even like it, you know? Well, even the way you recorded the album, right? With Eric being overseas, I mean, you could have never done that 30 years ago. <laughs> no, I don't ever want to do it that way again either. <laughs> I was so stressful. It was uh, like, it, it just added to the stress of the whole situation, you yeah. know, um, just, just, we, you know, we got to put this record out where the, uh, the, <laughs> the residency <laughs> with the scorpions is bearing down on us. <laughs> and now we're getting a new singer in the band still haven't told the label, you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> and so, yes. And he did a great job. And what was funny is after uh, it was all said and done, when we got to Vegas, and um he had recorded 80 percent of the record by himself at his house in sweden and he um we get to vegas and after our first rehearsal him and i go to a bar at the hotel and just just to grab a beer and something to eat and he goes uh he goes man he goes that was the first time i ever recorded my own vocals and i was like I am so glad you told me that. <laughs> and not when you, they're like, not before you sang one note, because I would have been, I would have been uh, no. all great. All great. If I had any hair left at all. I'd be all great. And, oh, and, uh, and yeah, he, he, he started laughing. He's like, oh yeah, I never even thought of telling you guys. I just did it. And I go, did you have like one of your friends help you out? He, I mean, he spoke to Nick on what to get and what sure. kind of mic Nick, Nick would like to use and, he goes, I just went on YouTube and followed a whole bunch of stuff on YouTube. I was like, all right, good to know. But yeah, he <laughs> likes doing it that way. And he kind of wants to do the next record that way. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> see, hopefully he lives in the States by then. <laughs> there you go. Right. So now, I mean, one of the things you guys can never get away from, and, and there's articles all over the internet again this week, you know, fans always are asking for a reunion tour from you guys with Sebastian, right? Yet you clearly are moving forward with Eric. You've got a lot of momentum, like we were speaking about. Do you ever yeah. get tired seeing those stories or do you kind of like understand where the fans come from with this? Or is it like enough is enough? That's 30 years ago. We're moving forward. You know, we moved on so long ago now. It's just like, it, it, it's, I really, I think our fans that want to move with us have moved with us, especially now. So there's plenty of rock and roll to go around for everyone. If they don't want to come to our show, then they don't have to come to our show. We'd love to see them there, but if they don't want to, we're not going to force them, you know? Um, we're we're in, in such a great place. And with Eric and our, our record charted in the States and it charted in England and it charted, it charted in so many countries Absolutely. and it's just, it's killing. And we're, we're, this is just the beginning, man. And to that point, right, if I heard right, didn't you guys film your London show and record it for a possible DVD and live album? Is that correct? We did. We did. Uh, we're looking at next year at some point to release that. We uh, we're getting the footage and getting uh, all the edits soon. Um, it's just so happy. It's a holiday, so I, I don't sure. expect it here. Here, I mean, I've heard a couple rough mixes of it, and it just sounds awesome. It it it's funny when when this is what 
I was saying like challenges that we never shy from a challenge. We get there and we, there's just cameras everywhere, you know, <laughs> and we all just look at each other and no one said anything about filming or anything. We just said, ah, we probably want to keep the F-bombs to a minimum you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> on stage. And that was the only thing we said. And we, you could feel it like you in the dressing room before we went out, you could feel it. Like we knew that we were going to record a live record. We were going to record a live DVD we didn't talk about it. We didn't talk. We just went out and did it. But I could tell from the minute that first click Rob hit on the hi hats that it was we were on fire. Like we were absolutely on fire. Like we had something to prove. And this band always works well like that. You you yep. you put a chip on Skid Row's shoulder, man. You don't want to come <laughs> on after us. <laughs> oh man! So so that live album DVD you think will be out in early 2023? I don't know if it's early. Okay. Um, they, they haven't really set a date for it yet, but I think it may be mid, mid, okay. you know, first, first third. Certainly of the year. in 2023, we'll see a live DVD and album from the band. That's Absolutely. awesome. Now, yeah. speaking of live, I mean, to me, I've seen the band on so many great tours over the years, right? You mentioned before the Scorpions and the Vegas residency, right? But even going back to 89, I remember seeing you guys at Giant Stadium with Bon Jovi, right? And you did that tour. Yeah. Then you did the Guns N' Roses 91 tour. You mentioned the Kiss Farewell tour before. And mm -hmm. um, you did that for, I think, an entire year. The, the original farewell tour, I should say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the first farewell tour. <laughs> and that comes as a Kiss fan, but it was the first farewell tour. But um, yeah. when you look back on all these great tours, are there any that stand out to you like, hey, that was really a lot of fun? Or is there one that's more memorable than the others? Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, the Kiss tour in 2000, I mean... I'm such a huge Kiss fan and Gene Simmons is like one of the reasons I play bass and and it's just you know that tour meant so much as a Kiss fan and as a Gene Simmons fan um to be on and I watched every show except for one I think I forget how many shows we did with them but it was we were out nine or ten months I believe yep. but I yep. only missed one show because we had a double we played in Atlanta and we had the show with Kiss and then we had our own show across town and that's the only one I missed I think on that whole mm -hmm. tour because I, I watched every single one from the side <laughs> and mm -hmm. that tour just it, it was incredible and then just just getting to to you know talk to those guys the 16 year old and 13 year old and <laughs> Yeah, it took a while to kind of get used to it, you know, and and it, by the time I did, it, it it was cool, you know, just to be able to <laughs> get used to Paul Stanley walking in your dressing room. What what you, <laughs> what you idiots do last night? You know, <laughs> that type of thing. it's just like yeah, nothing, you know. <laughs> uh, and then fast forward, like whatever it was, fifteen years later, you guys did a couple of cruises with them as well. Yeah, the Kiss Cruise. Yeah, those were fun. Those were a lot of fun, man. Um, the, you know the, just being the kiss fan that i am the, just hearing kiss 24 hours a day and uh, like <laughs> pipe it doesn't suck it doesn't suck <laughs> Absolutely. Really awesome. that's awesome now i've heard you saying in the past you're a vinyl guy right so when a fan is buying your record do you want them to sit down like i used to all through the 80s and 90s with the vinyl reading those credits do you mind if they stream i know you guys posted recently you guys had like over 97 million streams in the last year of your music but how do you want fans to consume your music these days? Man, to, to, I, I would like, stream, streaming's fine, I guess. I don't stream. I, I like listening to physical music either. Like same thing, like with the vinyl, I'll do that. Every record I get, even if I get an, a record that I had as a kid, I want to see if they changed anything. On so <laughs> I can sit there and listen to it and I go through all the credits and I go through everything, see if they stuck a different picture on there. But um, I mean, I, I like physical stuff that I could just go up oh, here. It is boom. And, you know, whether it's in my phone or it's uh, that I, you know, I, I, I buy my music, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, artists get their fair share of what they're supposed <laughs> to get. That's the, way I like to buy, that's the way I like to buy music. You sure. know, they don't have to play it 700 times to make a dollar. <laughs> so, true. I mean? right. so true. And that, that's, that's, you know, it's a double-edged sword talking about it, but it, <laughs> it, I, I like me personally, I like going and buying something and bring it home and listening to it. And then if I want, I'll stick it in my iTunes and, you know, listen, right. listen to it again. Right. Whenever Absolutely. I want. 
you know. Absolutely. Do you, could you ever envision you guys maybe doing like a deluxe edition or a box set for any of your albums, including live concerts, demos, whatever it may be from that era? Um, well, we did the, uh, the, Atlant uh, the Atlantic years. We put out um, remastered versions of the first three records. And then there's a, um, uh, from the Subhuman Race Tour, there's a, a live record that we did that was released only, I think, in Japan. Right. And that's in there. And uh, yeah, but I see us doing more stuff like that down the line. That's awesome. And I know you guys have been also, we were talking about the tour before, saying that there's an official Skid Row newsletter that fans could sign up for and get pre-sale information. So just tell fans about that so that this way, if they're looking for some of those pre-sale tickets, they know how to get them. Yeah, the, the best, the, your best bet is to go straight to skidrow.com and it has, it'll guide you to where you need to go um and and the announcements and like yeah the 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 if you're a member um you you'll you'll have access i believe you have early access to some stuff uh, it's just like our vips when we do yep. vip you got early access uh to the venue and to you know merch so you're not elbowing people for a shirt you like <laughs> <laughs> absolutely well we mentioned before that the pre-sale tickets started today the general public starts on friday december 9th if the show's in 2023 or anything like the ones you guys have done in 22 i know the reviews are going to be incredible and fans are absolutely not going to want to miss this is there anything else you want your fans to know about those upcoming shows next year it's going to be great man it, it's you get you put two badass bands like skid row and buck cherry together and you're just gonna have a great show and a great night so yeah don't miss it we, we uh we're, we're planning on doing more but as for right now these are three solid weeks that we're doing so it's going to go awesome. by that, and you mentioned before last thing that about the live album maybe sometime in 2023 any chance for another studio album or will we be waiting another decade no not going to wait another decade i'll All tell right. you that we've already <laughs> we we already started piling up ideas. So, and that's the first time ever like that. We, we started writing stuff before the record was released in October. And we look at each other. We're like, who are we? We've never <laughs> done this before, man. It's uh, always taken so long, but yeah, we, we've already started piling up songs. So we're stoked. Well, to me, that's great because that means to me, the excitement that the fans see on stage with the bands is translating even behind the scenes. Because like you said, you who are these guys writing all these songs? To me, I'm hearing that excitement translating behind the scenes that we got to get more material. We got to get more songs out, whatever. Can, that's exciting as a fan. Oh, yeah, man. I, I can't tell you how just pumped up we are to I, we're riding this high right now. That is just so great. And uh, we're, we're going to we're going to ride it for as long as we can. Awesome. Well, Rachel, have a happy holidays time period to you and your family. Uh, you best well. of luck on 2023 and the tour dates. I'm sure we'll all be seeing you out on the tour. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, man. All righty. There you have it. I'd like to thank Rachel for all of his time today, talking all about the upcoming 2023 tour with Buck Cherry, the new Skid Row album, and so much more. Thanks so much, Rachel. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You could also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.